Um, welcome, I'm Tara doyle Enneking. Great to see all of you again, one week out from elections. I'm uh, you know, very grateful that we have our uh, incumbent Congresswoman Marilyn Strickland here today. So good to see you. Uh, we also have her opponent, Keith Swank, and anxious to learn a little bit more about you as well. And you know, really with elections, we, we all have a different journey that led us to this point. We're all compelled by different reasons to serve. Um, those that have that calling, we're certainly grateful for. So these type of kind of informal platforms provide us a little bit more insight. And, and that way, you know, our community can kind of make some determinations of who seems to kind of carry that alignment of the business community, um, you know, best for them. And so it's just great that you're both your willingness to be here today to uh, go through that exploration with us. Uh, Lori, thank you for sending um, the announcement about Pierce County Executive Bruce Dammeyer, who will be speaking at Puyallup's 2022 Veterans Day celebration. That's going to be Sunday, um, November 6th at 2 p.m. In Pavil at the Pavilion in Pioneer Park. So thanks for sending that, Lori. Appreciate it. Uh, we were also going to have um, Paul Herrera, County Councilman Paul Herrera today, but I think that's getting kicked to the next one. So um, once we meet with our uh, candidates here, we will then, you know, kind of resume a normal GAC meeting where we'll touch base with some of our city, county, and other state folks that are on the line. But in the meantime, welcome. Good morning. Um, I'd like to also introduce Luke Corum. Luke, want to say a few words? Good morning. Hi, my name is uh, Luke Corum. I help out with these candidate forums. We just got done a few weeks back doing all the local races, and this is the final one, so I'm looking forward to it. And um, been involved with the chamber for the last few years, been on the board for the last couple of years, and been doing these uh, candidate forum questions for a few years as well. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, and then and and so again, when we uh, you know kind of just go through these few questions and just the the kind of get to know you and 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 reasons why. Um, we, uh, you know, as a chamber, of course, goes without saying, have our business lens on mostly. So as much as, um, you know, Luke has prepared some questions, I, I will just say they're teed up more for the business audience. Anything you feel important to, to kind of add on is absolutely appropriate. But again, that's, that's predominantly our target. So, so good morning. We'll start with, um, you know, if you will, just a, you know, a couple minutes on, who you are and, you know, incumbent Marilyn Strickland, uh, you know, let us know how it's gone for you the last couple of years and, and then why you continue to still want to move forward your sort of vision and, and guidance, uh, you know, at, at the level you are federally. And then, so you'll have two minutes and then we'll go to you as well, Keith, and kind of hear the same thing, your little two minute uh who you are and why, and then we'll go to Luke for some questions and then we'll follow up again um, with some closing. So, hey, that's the big format. I know you're all seasoned pros now. So um, welcome Congresswoman uh, Marilyn Strickland. All right, well, nice to see all of you here at the Puyallup Sumner Chamber. My name is Marilyn Strickland. I'm finishing my first term in Congress. Prior to being a member of Congress, I was the two-term mayor of Tacoma, and I also served as president and CEO of the Seattle Metropolitan Chamber of Commerce. So I take pride in the fact that I understand the needs of private businesses as well as local government and trying to find ways for us to work together regardless of our political affiliation. I am you know, very proud that... We came out of the pandemic when I was sworn in. When I ran for Congress, we were in the throes of a pandemic. We had to get vaccines out to people. We passed the American Rescue Plan, which got a lot into our business community to keep their doors open, keep people employed. We helped a lot of families stay housed because they were able to get access to a child income tax credit. On top of that, we passed the CHIPS Act, which is really about manufacturing technology here in the U.S. And we know that these electronic chips are part of everything we use every day, from automobiles to washing machines to refrigerators. So bringing those things back here and onshoring them is very, very important. On top of that, I'm acutely aware that the Puyallup Sumner business community is diverse. 
it's agriculture, it's retail, it's automobile. You have the Washington State Fair, which is a huge tourist attraction every year. You have a warehousing and logistic district. So really it's important for us to understand the depth and breadth of your business community along with your retailer in Main Street and figuring out how the federal government can do things like investing in the completion of 167 to move goods and services, like investing in Canyon Road, like investing in infrastructure, like the bridge that's over the warehouse district going to Sumner. So I look forward to hearing your questions today and working with you. But I tell folks that I am a public servant who understands the needs of businesses of all sizes. And I look forward to continue serving you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, welcome, Keith Swain. Great to have you here as well. Another great chamber member. Uh, I'm rolling it over to you with your introduction. Oh. There we go. I'm sorry about that. My mute button. No problem. There you go. Didn't find it. Good morning. My name is Keith Swank. I'm a United States Army Airborne Infantry Veteran, and I'm a 32-year veteran commander of the Seattle Police Department. Crime is at an all-time high. It's the highest it's been since I became an officer, which was at the height of the crack epidemic in 1990. Property crime is out of control, and most of the crime is fueled by drug addiction. When people are addicted to opioids, the most important thing to them is the next high, and they will do anything to get it, including stealing from our great local businesses. Understanding how strong this addiction is, is the key to understanding how to deal with it. I believe that law enforcement should mostly be handled at the local level, but it is also a federal government's responsibility to keep our citizens safe. We help keep our citizens safe by stopping the illegal drugs from flowing across our borders into our communities. We can do this if we have the will. Inflation is the highest it's been in 40 years. It's affecting people of all economic status. Businesses must pass these costs onto the consumer in order to continue to stay open and running, but the Democrat party likes to call these businesses greedy. The federal government tells us that inflation is at 8.2%, but everything voters in the 10th district must buy has increased by much more than that. Gas is twice what it used to be two years ago. Groceries are up 30%. Home heating is up 20%. And the list goes on and on. Democrats have been in charge of Washington, D.C. these last two years. Are you better off today? If you are, then vote for Democrats. If not, then vote for change. Vote for safe communities, vote for lower gas prices, vote for lower food prices, vote for affordable living, and vote for Keith Swank for Congress. Thank you. Great. Welcome. Well, that gives us a nice little glimpse into both of uh, who you are and what compels you. And yes, crime. You know, we, we, it's kind of crazy when chambers are, are hosting crime symposiums, but obviously top of mind for all of us and the impact uh, to business does not go unnoticed. Right, Luke Corum? Yes. <laughs> so so <I> auto dealer. <laughs> yeah, we've had uh, our fair share of crime, but I'll take it from here. Um, so a uh, quick couple things. So all the questions I, I um, wrote out three questions for each of you, and I pull them straight off your website. So there are things that uh, you're familiar with. And so the way I do it is I'll ask one question uh, to the Congresswoman and then I'll go over to Mr. Swank and then back to the uh, Congresswoman and we'll just go that format. So that being said, the first question to Congresswoman uh, Strickland, building an inclusive economy is listed as one of your top pri priorities on your campaign website. What does that mean to you? Thank you for that question, Luke. When I talk about an inclusive economy, it means that every able-bodied person who wants to work has the opportunity to have access to a good job. And that could be anything from the building trades to help fill the jobs. That I think we, I'm going to, Congresswoman, are you all not hearing her right now? Yeah, I think we're not able to hear you right now, Congresswoman Strickland. Oh, gosh.
There's something going on where we haven't been able to hear you the last maybe oh. second. Okay. Can you hear me now? Just no. need to do a quick recap. I'm sorry. We heard, heard your first that. sentence. <laughs> Hold on one second. I'm going to try something. Okay. Can, okay. Can you hear me now? Now, yes. Okay. Yeah. I can barely hear you, but that's okay as long as you can hear me. Yeah. So, um, what do I mean by inclusive economy? Yes. What it means to me is that every single person. Oh, we lost her again. Lost again. <laughs> okay, our Bluetooth is turned off. Can you hear me? I we sure can. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so. Inclusive economy is one where every person who wants to work hard has access to a job that pay, pays well, regardless of their education level or what they do for a living. So that can be anything from working in the building trades to help build this infrastructure that we want to invest in. It could be working in retail. It could be working in hospitality. It could be working, you know, a job that requires ex expertise in technology. But it's really being very intentional about job creation to make sure that we're reaching out to every possible audience so that every person who wants to to work hard has access to a good job. And I also say this too as a former mayor, is that one of the best deterrents to crime is access to a good job, health care, and good benefits. So it's really just making sure that we are using work and economic opportunity as a foundation for strong communities and the ability to handle some of our big social problems. Okay. Thank you. So my next question is for Mr. Swank. Um, I noticed when I, I was cruising through your your website uh, last night and uh, that you've sought out the U.S. Congress a few times now. So my question to you is you've sought out the U.S. congressional seat for the past few elections. What is it about Congress that motivates you to run? I believe that the federal government is too involved in our daily lives at the local level. And I want to go to Washington, D.C. to help deter that. I think the federal government should have play a limited role in our lives and that local government and people at the local level know what's best for their community, for their businesses, for their children, not bureaucrats 3,000 miles away in Washington, D.C. So I think over the years, the federal government has expanded its role into our lives where it shouldn't be. And I've been an advocate for decreasing the influence of the federal government for years. And that's what's attracted me to run for that level office. Thank you. And, and back to Congresswoman Strickland. So this question has to do with career advice. So if you're giving a young person career advice, what fields or industries do you think have the most upside in the Puget Sound in the next 20 to 30 years? Well, I would say that the advice that I give to most young people, whether they're in high school or college, is to pick a field where you know there is going to be growing and high demand. We need healthcare workers along the entire spectrum. That includes people who work in rehabilitation care, who work directly in hospitals, and people who work in elder care. And so I always talk about look for industries where you know that there is a growing potential. Our population is aging, people are living longer, and we have a caregiving crisis. And so I want to make sure that people are going into fields where there's upside potential for promotion, but also high demand. Another area I would also encourage people to go into is education. You know, because of the pandemic, a lot of people have left a lot of professions, but we have a teaching shortage. And education is a calling, it's a noble profession, and we need more people to go into education. And then finally, in the private sector, I tell folks that when folks talk about these big tech companies or big global companies that have been successful, it's often a big idea that someone had at home. And so consider entrepreneurship. Some of the most successful businesses I know are people who had big ideas and just started doing them on their own. And so keep your options open, be flexible. And I'd say, number one, be a good communicator and know how to work on a team. So those are just some examples of professions that I would advise young people to go into. Thank you. And to Mr. Swink, uh, kind of down the same line, same question, but instead of career advice, if you were to start a business in the 10th district today, what kind of business would you start? 
Well, if I were to start one myself, I would start a consulting business because that's where I have my expertise at is in law enforcement. But if I were just going to talk generally speaking about businesses, I think that I would um, be leaning towards a manufacturing business. I think we need to bring manufacturing to back to our local communities. A lot of it's been shipped overseas and American American entrepreneurs and American workers are the best in the world. And we should return all that um, work here to America and do as much as we can. The Congresswoman spoke about chips, computer chips. We have a shortage of that worldwide. Um, I believe we can produce those here. We can produce anything here. The United States is the leader of the world in all this technology and, and innovation we brought throughout the years. And we need to make sure we return it here. Thanks. Thank you. And to Congresswoman Strickland. So this one I kind of just uh, uh, went with on the fly, just because something that you said earlier, and it kind of goes down to what Mr. Swank was just saying, chips. So I took that for granted up to the pandemic. You know, being in the auto industry, we I just felt like they just always would be there. You know, we could fill our lots as quickly as possible. And as I found out, and so many other auto dealers found out throughout the uh, country, that wasn't the case. Once those got... Uh, shut off, the car stopped, and computers and so on. And what does that exactly mean? So you mentioned in your opening statement about bringing chips manufacturers here on site or to the United States. Can you give us a couple examples and maybe in our region as well? Yeah, I mean, there was a time when Intel had a site here in the 10th district. And I think there are two parts of this. You know, what we learned during the pandemic is that a lot of things that we depend on on a daily basis are manufactured overseas. And because there have been challenges with supply chains and shipping and just getting things quickly, we realized that we need to bring manufacturing here at home. And obviously with the technology, the technological chips that go in just about everything, there's an opportunity to do that. In Ohio, for example, I know that they have expanded a plant to manufacture chips. And so as a former mayor, I'm always making a pitch for my region to say, we have manufacturing capacity, we have a deep water port, we we have rail, we have the talent. So there's an opportunity to think about how we can bring those types of jobs here. And also too, you know, with the CHIPS Act, it's really about manufacturing things here. And that, and that can also include other things like the healthcare equipment that we needed during the pandemic, masks, you know, just basic things like that. And so it's really looking at planning for the future, but ensuring number one, that our economy depends on those chips so much. So let's manufacture them here at home. And number two, let's be prepared for another crisis because there will be one. And the more that we're able to do here at home, the more stable our economy is. And here's an important part, we can be a net exporter and send our products around the world as well, as well and get all, access to all those customers around the world. Thank you. And to Mr. Swank, so this one has to do just because the 10th district encompasses so much military and obviously JBLM, and you have, uh, you have prior experience in the U.S. military, as you mentioned. So as a congressman, Mr. Swank, if you were to, how would you help military service men and women transition from military to, to civilian work life like you did so well? When I uh, transitioned to civilian work life, there was nobody there to help me. And so I learned at that time that we need to have um, groups that can help people for that transition. I was on my own. We didn't have a group there or a unit or anything like that at all had helped me out. But since then, they have come up with groups like that, the VFW, um, other organizations help uh, veterans transition. I believe that we can do better with that and with the VA can help people also. So it's very important to me for that transitional phase there. And I think that I can bring my experiences about what I didn't have. And, and uh, luckily I made it through there and I didn't have, I wasn't in the, the war and I didn't have PTSD and things like that. So for other people, veterans that go through that stuff, we need to make sure that we have the services available to them to be able to make that transition into civilian life. Uh, it's a hard transition for many people. And some people fall by the wayside because of the inability to have the help that they need. Understood. Thank you for that. And I'll uh, finish my questions with uh, Congresswoman Strickland. And this is one of the questions I pre-wrote just because I was kind of curious. What, what is your experience been like in your first term in Congress? Has there been any learning lessons or stories you have? You <laughs> How much time do you have? Yeah. So, you know 
I, I will say this, you know, as I tell people that I'm a freshman in Congress, but I'm not a novice when it comes to politics. And I say that having been a mayor and even a chamber CEO doing a lot of work with our federal delegation, I'm acutely aware of the different roles that local government plays, that state government plays, and that the federal government plays. And so I'd say for me, my focus has been really in three areas. I serve on the House Armed Services Committee because JBLM is right in the middle of our district. And so I've been doing work to secure funding for a veteran services hub, working with some of our tech companies to make sure they are actually on base while people are still serving so that their transition into the workforce is an easy and smooth one. And I've been really focused on housing. Military bases have huge swaths of property and they have an opportunity to build more housing on post to securely house our families and those who serve and also easing some of the pressure that is part of the big housing crunch that we're having in the region. But overall, I tell people that um, we've done some good bipartisan work. The House Armed Services Committee and the Infrastructure Committee are probably the two committees that rely on bipartisan work to get even these things out of committee. So I'm proud of that work, but I'd say overall, it's what I expected. And at the same time, when you meet people in person who you see on TV who are larger than life, you realize one thing. We don't agree on everything, but these are regular folks like us. Someone's mom, someone's dad, someone's husband, someone's wife, someone's aunt, uncle, father, aunt, you name it. And we're just all doing the best we can. And so I tell folks that I will work with anyone who wants to work with me. I will never compromise my values, but this is all about delivering for the 10th district. Thank you. And that completes my questions uh, for Congresswoman Strickland and uh, Mr. Swank, and I'll hand it back to Tara. Thank you. Well, I just have a follow up again, kind of with the, the chamber hat on. Um, you know, we're chasing a lot of things, uh, sort of certainly labor workforce issues are, are a problem we're all grappling with, um, economic development. Um, but I am intrigued sort of also with this whole idea of globalization opportunities and maybe tapping more into world trade center opportunities um, in our area. So I'll ask both of you, um, you know, going forward, in what ways might you be able to, at the federal level, help us, help partner with us, light a fire under us, tap us into resources that could be helpful in any of those three areas? And also, let me just, yeah, yeah you know, um, I will start by reminding us that, you know, we live in a region that has two giant ports and they are some of the busiest and most productive ports in the country. And trade has in the past or somehow recently has become a bad word. And I remind folks that 95% of the world's consumers live outside of the U.S. So we have opportunities here in the 10th district to manufacture things and to send them overseas to get access to those markets. It's a way to create good jobs. Jobs tied to trade are actually paying 25% higher than jobs in other industries. And so as far as resources, you know, we can have the SBA and the U.S. Trade Office come to the 10th district mm -hmm. and have forum and resources about how local businesses can get into the export business. I think another thing that's important too is understanding the tariffs and the different tariffs that exist here in the U.S. and some of our potential trade partners. But I view international trade as an opportunity that we don't think enough about. And I tell folks that most people who engage in trade are small businesses. They're not the giant corporations. And there are tons of opportunities to be parts of supply chains, but, in, but getting access to those markets. And having good trade policy is good for national and global security because you form relationships and you form alliances. I agree. I am three weeks away from my MBA and I just had two globalization uh, classes and they have absolutely opened my eyes to the opportunities and to reframe it, like you said. What an yep. opportunity we have. So, well, that's good. That's, that's great. All right, Keith, not a whole lot of time to think about that question, but I, uh, I know you know what our issues are here and would love to see how you would posture yourselves to help us. Oh, I, I um, believe that for too long, we have been talking to children in school and telling them too much that they just need to go to college and be successful. And like the Congresswoman talked about trades, I'm all for bringing trades back. It's very important. Actually, I've done some research on that. And there's a shortage of carpenters and electricians and people who built America and keep America going. So I would be encouraging that. Those are well-paying jobs. Those are things that people shouldn't shun or look down upon. But elitists oftentimes do that. And I think that the federal government needs to make our tax structure so that it's business friendly. We should make sure that businesses want to, to 
open up shop here in Washington state. And one of the things is Olympia. They also need to work. It's out of our hands at the federal level, but Olympia needs to work on making our state more business friendly. And I would support things like that. And lastly, um, we need to make sure that we return to energy independence. Fuel fuels everything. It is responsible for our cost of living, everything that we have delivered to us. It takes fuel to do that. We're not going to be an electric only country in the near foreseeable future. We need to continue on this path while we're working on other technologies. And we were in energy, energy independent before we should return to that. And that will help our economics here in the state and the nation. Thank you. Ah, wonderful. Well, great initiatives and we'd be grateful to partner on either. So uh, I'm going to do something a little out of order and I, I certainly hope you don't mind. Um, we have Ryan Windish with us in Sumner and I know he has to leave at 830 and we in our area have had a bit of a devastating fire on Main Street. And I think just a quick update on that would be valuable to this audience before we go to closing remarks. If, if with your respect, I can do that. Congresswoman Strickland keeps going. All right, Ryan. There we go. Oh, thank you. Uh, appreciate the time and squeezing me in here. Yeah, Sumner suffered a fire on Friday. It destroyed, uh, completely destroyed uh, one building. It affected uh, five businesses in a disaster kind of a way. Um, and 15 businesses were affected overall. So we are um, right now, uh, we're also doing some research, some investigation on the cause of the fire. There's some um, suspicious activity that people are investigating, uh, trying to get to the bottom of that. But in, in the meantime, for the businesses, uh, we are, of course, scrambling a bit, um, doing research on and, and reaching out to the emergency management services and the SBA to see what kind of uh, loans and funding we can, we can uh, point the businesses in that direction. There's also a fundraising campaign that was kicked off the day of uh, for helping with the businesses that's being run through our Sumner Main Street Association. Uh, and so we are continuing to communicate with the businesses. We'll be meeting with them again this week and looking for uh, ways that we can help. Um, and it's going to be kind of a long haul, right? Uh, if uh, Marshall Bennett, the building owner, wants to rebuild, but that's going to take time. And so we are... Um, working to do what we can. And really on, on the city's end, it's obviously the investigation, but then for me, it's uh, reaching out to economic development types and, and emergency management folks to figure out what we can do, uh, what's available for the businesses um, in, the, in the short term. So that's my quick update, which isn't incredibly detailed, but we are uh, doing what we can and we'll be communicating with the businesses as soon as we can. I'll ask Lori uh, Waltier attended the Sumner Main Street Association meeting right after and I know there are a lot of ideas that are sort of bouncing around in what ways the chamber can can be helpful I know there's a benefit concert I know that there's uh, the sumnerfire.com site that has the updates there thanks for posting that in Lori um, and then the the businesses that too with the uh, construction uh, going on on Kincaid that we need to figure out how to support as well so a number of things in our gem of a community, Sumner. Lori, is there anything else that came from your meetings to add that, that any folks should know right now? Or... Oh, I know you turned off your mute, but we don't hear you. And I could tell by your voice or your face, <laughs> you're going, woo! <laughs> it's not well baked yet. That's what I think she's saying. <laughs> so more to come. Can Thanks. you hear me now? I can hear you now. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, no, I think you've covered everything and there's another meeting tomorrow, but I just, I guess I would reiterate that the chamber is working very closely with Main Street um, to help the short-term needs as well as long-term uh, needs. So more on that as time goes on and we're, we're going to give everybody free chamber memberships who were affected. So. Great. I appreciate it. Well, thank you, Ryan. I know you have thank to go out. I'm glad we got to, to pop in. So thank you. Thank you for the time. Appreciate it. All right. All right, back to our, our candidates. I, uh, again, just, just to wrap up, I love you know your responses to the questions. I think it's been very informative. I, I don't know if um, anyone has any burning questions they wanna put in the chat. 
um, in the meantime, but I think we'll just, you know, turn it back to both of you with any wrap up comments of anything we might not have covered or anything you may want us to hear. So we'll start with Congresswoman Strickland again. Right. Well, thank you for this um, brief opportunity to meet with your members and hear about what's on your minds and um, let the folks in Sumner know that I'm going to have my office reach out to the SBA to see if there's any disaster relief or what insurance companies can do to help make you whole again. I know that it's devastating to lose a beloved business. Um, on top of that, you know, I'm here asking for a second term. I am rare bird that is a sociologist with an MBA who served in the public sector and understands how the private sector works very intimately. And I believe that my skill set and my experience really bodes well for the business community as well as the community overall. Um, every day I'm fighting for a nation that is more safe, more just, and more secure. I was proud to vote for a suite of federal public safety bills that will allow us to hire more police officers, invest in mental health, and do what we can to hire more detectives to solve some of these crimes. But also, too, on the prevention and doing what we can to address addiction, making sure that people have access to good jobs and stable homes. And so I'm working every day for this nation. I'm proud to serve on the House Armed Services and Transportation and Infrastructure Committees. And I tell folks that my job is to help you cut through the red tape to get what you need. We've recovered over $6 million for people from the Social Security Office, from the VA, and from the IRS. And we will continue to do what I call the not so glamorous work of constituent relations every day here on the ground. So thank you for the opportunity and I'd be honored to represent you again in Congress. Wonderful. Thank you. All right, Keith, close us out. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. Our election is one week away. Are you better off today than you were two years ago? Is the country our state, our communities headed in the right direction? If they're not, then the choice is clear. Democrats own everything that is happening, especially in our state. They've been in charge of our state for over 30 years, and they've been in charge of Washington, D.C. these past two years. This year, vote for change. Vote for a new direction. Vote for common sense solutions. Vote for me, Keith Swank. Thank you. Great. Again, thank you again to both of you. I know it's been a, you know, a, a, a long couple of months here campaigning. I know what that looks like. And, you know, you'll be just around the corner able to take a nice, well needed rest. So best of luck to you both. And thank you for sharing your journey and your uh, vision for our community. We so appreciate uh, the support here from the chamber community. Appreciate it. Um, you're more than welcome to stay on to finish our, our meeting with some check-ins, but uh, understand if you have to uh, bounce off as well. I will kick it over to, well, first of all, I want to mention um, Senator Gildon, who is on our call. Um, you know, his wife's business, The Attic, was one of those businesses that uh, was lost in the fire. And so, um, you know, I my heart went out to them, you know, when we got started seeing messages at three or four in the morning about the fire um, it was great to see them. It was great to see the outpour of love of uh, however many hundred people at the city hall that came out that very next day to Sumner. I am just so proud to be a part of a community that that pulls together like that. And um, again, I, Senator Gildon, I'm, I'm sorry for all that you're going through with your family and, and the businesses there. I know you truly care. And I just, yeah, I thank you. And I'm sorry. And we're going to Roll to you for any updates that you may have. No, I don't really have any big, huge legislative updates. Thank you all for the support that you've shown to our family over the last uh, few days since the fire. Um, and, you know, we do plan to rebuild that as soon as possible. And uh, most likely I'll probably be coming over to you, Tara, and maybe a couple of other folks just to do a little bit of stakeholdering and see what Sumner needs and then you know to help guide us in the rebuilding efforts but i have two numbers for you today only two numbers uh 975 and seven so as of yesterday at midnight uh the state of emergency in washington state ended after 975 days uh and then the other number is seven that's how many days it is till election time 
So I'm not going to ask you to vote for any particular candidate or party, but I am going to ask you to vote. So make sure that, you know, you get that ballot off your kitchen table and and get it turned in either into the mailbox or the drop box or whatever your preferred method is. But please make sure that you vote. That's it. Thank you. You know, a rebuild and asking what we need. Well, I think our chamber needs a new office. <laughs> <laughs> Time to do the reversal, the Puyallup Sumner back to the Sumner, the Sumner Puyallup <laughs> that Sumner keeps teasing us about. <laughs> no, I look forward to, yeah, seeing what kinds of things come up with that rebuild. All right. Who else? Cindy, do you have anything, Representative Jacobson, to add or? No, not much. The the seven days away, that's taken up all the air out of the room. So, um, right now, the only thing legislative wise is if you have capital requests, you know, public capital requests or uh, bill ideas, you know, this is the time, particularly right after the election that we'll be, we'll be working on those right after we get a little rest. So thank you, Tara. I would love to um, maybe meet with you for a little bit of exploration on how I could be helpful with just some ideas on, on some capital investments of some of our stakeholders. So I get together with you as soon as you get your, your rest. <laughs> yeah, thank you, great idea. All right, uh, let's see. So who else do we have? We have um, Jeff from the city of Puyallup. Are you uh, on and available to let us know what kinds of things are brewing in Puyallup? Seems like we've got lots going on. Well, I'm on. I didn't really have anything prepared to talk about this morning because I looked at my calendar going, oh, we have a meeting this morning. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, we have a couple of big projects that are that are going forward that we're still working on. Probably the biggest thing, and this is what we'll toot our horn about for the next two years, is that um, we're working on updating our comprehensive plan. And that is really going to be the key to everything in terms of where our future goes. Uh, as we work on re-envisioning what the downtown is as we really work on setting what our vision is for the entire community as a whole. We just want everybody's feedback. We need everybody to participate and to be engaged in that. This is the opportunity to help us shape that future for at least the next 10 to 20 years. And, you know, we don't get many chances at doing this and having a, a big um, kind of the, the big jump at doing it. And one of the big things that I'm excited about that we're going to do is we'll work on overhauling all of our development regulations because, we want to set regulations that allow us to achieve what that vision is. So we want to tailor make them to make sure that we can achieve what we have adopted as a vision. So, and, and, and focus on doing that to, to bring that success about. So, I mean, that's a big thing that we're starting to work on. Um, you know, as, as anybody with councils know, we're going into budget process right now. So we're, we're looking forward to that. Um, I think everybody also probably knows activity has slowed down a little bit. We still have some major projects that are um, that are that are moving forward. Uh, working with uh, the Good Samaritan Hospital as they work on updating their master plan, which will be exciting vision for them and what they want to achieve in the coming years, as well as a couple other major uh, projects that are under construction and bringing new tenants. And we're you know, still working on bringing some some major tenants and some of the new um, industrial buildings that were built. So uh, Red Dot being one of them. Um, they're not fully in yet. They've started to move into the building, but they're getting close to, to getting everything done so they can be fully operational by the beginning of the year. Great. Well, thank you. On the fly, look at you. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to go ahead and bounce to you, one of your counterparts there, Meredith Neal. On hey. Did you make it home yet? You didn't quite make it home yet. <laughs> I didn't quite make it. I'm at Corm Corner right now. So, you know, a few feet away from City oh, Hall. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's see. So, you know, I think that um, one of the things that we are wrapping up right now is our downtown streetscape master plan. Uh, so that has identified 10 projects, some that are very exciting and some that are not so exciting, but vitally necessary for infrastructure. Um, so uh, there might be some capital requests coming down the pipeline for some of those. Um, most of them are economic development related infrastructure projects. Um, and then a few really fun projects like a festival street along Meeker that will uh, really sort of tie Meeker Mansion into the rest of downtown and give the community a place to have all sorts of different events. You know, we get a lot of different event requests that we don't really have the infrastructure in place to support right now. Um, so that went to council and the final 10 projects are up on our website now. If anybody is curious, 
Um, the other thing that we've got in the pipeline right now is we're working on a branding and destination marketing campaign. Um, so this is really sort of about setting up Puyallup as a brand for visitors. Uh, you know, we're so lucky that we have the Washington State Fair here and a lot of visitors come to the city, not just in the spring and in the fall for the main fairs, but also for the rest of the year. So this is really about helping people understand what else there is to explore in Puyallup. Uh, tomorrow, we're doing a stakeholder meeting for that. I think a lot of you on this call probably have been invited. If you're interested in being invited to the stakeholder meeting uh, to provide some feedback and you weren't, just ping me. Happy to add you to that list. Uh, and yeah, I'm pretty excited to see, you know, they have some concepts that they're rolling out. They did a lot of uh, engagement this summer at the farmer's markets and really got a feel from the community about what sort of messages appealed to them, what didn't, and also from visitors who were coming from out of the area to the farmer's market. So that's about all I've got. Uh, you know, tonight the council is hopefully going to pass their budget. And so we'll have a biennium budget for 2023, 2024, which uh, includes a number of necessary things like funding our comprehensive plan update and, um, you know, a kind of robust look at some of our different neighborhood areas around the city so great well, I'm, I'm leaving some um nice momentum from gilbert to uh, our visit to gilbert, arizona and a festival street um i've certainly walked away to wondering in what way as the chamber you know certainly is our is our business voice but we are also your designated visitor information center so in what way could we use some of those LTAC dollars that are designated for the folks that are visiting us at Visitor Information Center to make sure that role, that person is actually being more proactive of attracting tourism as we just keep, you know, really embracing the fact we truly are a destination um, with, you know, 50 activities and events for, at the fairgrounds a year with, you know, Farm 12 with all of our partners, um, you know, having such great you know, restaurants and, and vibrancy, uh, we need to really punctuate that tourism part of it. So love that festival. Absolutely. Street idea. Love that festival street idea. Um, I would also say just with my tourism hat on, um, you know, we, we have these wonderful events that are coming up this weekend, one paying homage to our hops heritage, which is brew all up. And so that is on Saturday, 12 to eight, we've got six bands, nine food trucks, 30 craft beer vendors. Uh, it was a great success for a first time last year. It's at the Showplex. Um, so we anticipate hopefully to have, you know, double, triple the crowd this year. Uh, but just so much fun and a great way to come, you know, support these breweries and, and have a good time. Uh, and then the Wednesday night before, if you can actually handle these two days in a row, is Winemakers Ball. And, and that too will have nine wineries. It will not be a sit down dinner. It'll be more of a, a tasting uh, with food pairings, um, you know, two bands, and we'll have um, some art displays that you can bid on as well. So just a fun cocktail evening. Um, but again, these are the kind of events where I just put such a smile on my face when you see, you know, councilmen, uh, you know, or last year it was, or two years ago, Mayor Door, and just different, just different people that are bonding and connecting in ways that you might not always see, you know, walking down the city streets. We're just all having a great time and coming together as a city. And I just love, love, love that part of it. So I hope you can make it. Um, who else do I have on the line that may have an update? I don't know if we have anything from Shelly at Workforce. No, nothing at all at this time. Thank you for asking though. You're welcome. I will mention um, Shelly Willis is on our board. Um, we have Sloan Clock on our board. Uh, Luke Corum is on our board. Um, our board retreat this last week at Sincadia, um, you know, we walked away fully uh, embracing the fact that we can be one of the best chambers in the country. And when we say that, we're not saying that because internally we think we're, you know, we're so great <laughs> or can be so great. It's because we so clearly recognize the opportunities in our community that are just right there for us. And when we looked at all of our uni unique skill sets and talents that we have on our board and our staff and the way that we are all such visionaries and we're all really posturing together with our stakeholders, you know, these last four years have been so great to build these relationships. And we are just primed so perfectly to, uh, to really just move Puyallup Sumner forward in ways that, that a chamber and a community can. And, and boy, if, if we didn't have the best facilitator to get us there, 
Uh, we're pretty fired up uh, to be able to do that and work with all of you. So I'll just mention those, those sentiments are, are very high right now. I see Christine Nan from Puget Sound Energy. Hello, I would love to have you introduce yourself. That's right. I kept wondering, I am trying to think what the name looks so familiar. So thank you for pinging me there. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Nice to meet you and please introduce yourself. Hi. Um, I see lots of familiar names and faces. Um, I'm Christine Nan. I am the new uh, government relations manager um, here at Puget Sound Energy. Um, I previously wrapped up four years uh, working for Senator Patty Murray. And so um, I, I was her South Sound director and I am also fairly local. I live in Edgewood. And so we are frequent Puyallup Sumner visitors. We love, love, love visiting. And so um, I'm so happy to be here and connect with you all again and joining you all um, on these regular meetings. So I'm here for you all if there's anything you need. Great. Well, hey, yeah, let's get you and I some time together too. So we yeah. can what best way love that. That. Yeah, be helpful. All right, folks. Well, hey, I'm going to give you some time back in your day. Thank you so much for tuning in. Vote next week. Uh, just, hey, enjoy the fall weather. And I hope to see you at Bruala for Winemakers Ball.